Whatever, it's just the flesh. Oh, you're being called out in chat. HOLY SHIT! <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Renzer, and I'd like to welcome you to a new podcast on my channel called Harass for Conversations, where me and Ground Trooper actually discuss what we think is are the most important aspects of being a good team. Now if you don't know, me and GT, we've been driving for a long time. Uh, thanks to his amazing driving skills, I've actually axiomed all the weapons uh, that matter on TR. And we're moving to VS right now, we'll probably finish with NC. So we, before, you know, uh, the show, we made a list of things that we thought were important for the driver and the gunner. And one of the first things we came up with the gunner, or the driver, sorry, was knowing your terrain. What do you think is the importance of that, GT? Is it the most important thing? Mm, I'd say it's, it's mostly correct, because if you know the terrain, you can have a realistic chance of predicting what's around every corner. And if you know what's, if you have a chance of knowing around the corner, you can plan ahead. What about those situations like getting into bases? Do you think that matters? If you're going for infantry, oh, most certainly, as the harasser is an amazing tool for that. All right. So we've also talked, you know, before we we started this conversation, me and GT had like a little bit of a list uh, going on, and we decided that controlling your speed and staying calm is actually very important as well. Um, could you, you know? Uh, explain what we meant by that. Yes, um, the what I see most whenever I pick up a new um, driver to try and teach them something, I see that they're usually going full speed, which means they don't have time to think, they don't have time to see the terrain in front of them, or to see the enemies. So they end up just blindly rushing into their deaths. Whereas a more slow and methodical approach could have led to much, much better results. Yeah, I guess we should we should cover the topic of tunnel vision right now because when people think about tunnel vision, they usually just imagine like infantry guys going for the kill. But uh, this actually applies a lot to harassers as well, right? I mean, it applies to any part of the game, but but certainly here you can get two folks in trying to kill one target and fail to comprehend the bigger picture. Can you... Like, could you give me an example where in your in what situation would you would you decide not to engage something? Like in a harasser, because I think many people, the mistake that they do is they, they try to go for any fight and then they end up dying and they don't know why, right? Okay, so um, say you're a harasser, you're slightly behind the enemy lines, there is a, uh, a column of armor, they haven't seen you. You come up on them, you might pick off a lightning or two, you see some rep sandies in the middle of everything. You might, you should probably decide not to engage anything near the rep sandy as that'll make your kill significantly harder. Whereas if you can just stay on the fringes, keep keep your eyes open, look for the weak, exposed target. That's what the harasser's made for. For harassing, like, you know. Speaking of killing stuff, I think many people see the harasser as, you know, um, a platform with two individuals, but uh, really they're a team, right? A gunner and a driver should, should always work uh, together. But, like, from my experience, from my, you know, hundreds, if not, if not a thousand hours in the harasser with you, um, I've noticed that actually... The gunner is not really the gunner, he's just the M1 clicker, meaning that the driver tells the gunner when to shoot, which is con which is actually communication is very important, right? I mean, to an extent, the better your gunner becomes and the more the gunner becomes used to you as a driver, the less you have to tell them what to do and the more you as a driver can rely on them to tell you what to do. Because mm -hmm. they might see stuff you haven't. What I mean is, I've noticed that many like beginner, beginner gunners, um, what they do is they go very trigger happy, right? When they see a target, they just shoot it, which is a big mistake, right? Uh, most certainly, especially say you're using something like uh, a Vulcan and they begin firing from way further out than the weapon will actually do the job. Um, whereas a more measured approach will allow you to close in and knock out target in seconds. Yeah, because like you, this should always be like in a kind of a cohesion, right? So the, the the driver should know when the gunner is going to fire, so he can give him the best position, right? If you're coming up on the target, and if you fire too early, you might not get the flank on him. But if you just wait and you know have contact with your gunner, and you and you guys know that you need to engage the back armor, and if you do it with communication, it usually works, right? Especially in the in the situations that we had very often. I remember when I started gunning, I used to be very trigger happy, if you remember that, and. Uh, it, it took me some time to actually understand what you're doing. Yeah, it's um, when you're coming from the uh, infantry game in particular, or even the tanks, I mean, any target is a valid target. If you can shoot it, you can pretty much kill it. Not so in a harasser where you're, 
you are the the small fish in a in a pool of big sharks, pretty much, and you it's have like to rely on It's like a glass cannon, speed. right? Like harasser for me has always been a glass cannon, meaning something yeah, has. Yeah, but that's not entirely correct because a glass cannon implies it can do way more damage. Um, oh, no, no, you I mean. Even in the best of, of circumstances, a harasser will never do as much damage as even the lightning. But, and this is the important part, the harasser is so much faster. And it allows you to apply that damage where it really matters. Okay, um, fair enough. So, I think we kind of talked about the, the basics of it being a driver. So, if we, uh, so knowing your terrain is the one thing. Controlling the speed and staying calm, so going slower, right? Communicating with the gunner. Uh, being creative and not having, uh, you know, talent vision. But, like, I added this one thing, and I think you agree that a good driver has to have gunner experience. Uh, could you elaborate on that? Yes. Um, when you're gunning, you will notice that in a harasser in particular, your aim will, depending on terrain, your aim will bounce all over the place. And if you've never gunned a harasser, you as a driver might not appreciate how difficult it can be to shoot the weapon while going across that terrain. Whereas if you have uh, that gunner experience, you might be able to compensate by trying to pick a better line through the terrain that'll give your gunner a smoother ride. Yes, yeah, so, so at least you know what the other guy is going through. And if, you know, looking at the other, other side of the spectrum of being a gunner, because uh, that's what I know mostly, right? Like, it's also important to have driver experience, because if you have driver experience, you know you know what to expect. I mean, you know what the other guy expects from you, you know, when, when the driver, what the driver wants you to do. So, you should try both sides of the story. But speaking of that, like, communicating with the driver is also very important, because if, if, if you're not sure whether you should fire or not, well, just ask, right? Asking doesn't hurt. And even if it, you know, fucks up a situation or two, at least in the future, you'll know what to expect and what the driver expects from you. Okay, so I said, like, from my experience, um, I, I was thinking that when it comes to, you know, um, aiming, being consistent in the way that you should practice tracking is the most important thing. And from my experience, even if you're you're playing a weapon like a halberd, which has high alpha damage, right? You still have to be able to keep on target for long periods of time. Uh, would you agree with that tracking is the most important factor, or do you have some different experience? Well, I, uh, I, I learned to drive Harassa with the Vulcan, and then that tracking is everything. So, for most weapons, Yes, Halberd is on the extreme end of not requiring it as much, but for pretty much everything else, tracking is super important. So a little bit of a, like, a tip for me, um, like because people, when they think that, oh, I need to be good at tracking, they just lower their sensitivity a lot, and that's true, but you need to get your sensitivity to a point where the, the, the mouse doesn't feel flickery, but then again, you're able to you know, turn around with the ha half of your mouse pad or something like that. Because very often when we're playing, like when me and Genti are playing Vulcan and he gets behind like a, let's say, a, a Mag Rider. Um, <laughs> and, you know, the Mag Rider starts going left and right. You, you Very often you have to, you know, turn your gun 180 degrees or something. And if, if, if you have too small of a, uh, you know, sensitivity, that's, that's going to be a pain. All right, so... Um, we were talking about discipline as, as well with a, with a gunner, but I guess we call we called it out that you know you have to know when to fire and what to expect. But um, I think the one aspect that we can actually talk about that doesn't actually wasn't actually covered while talking about driving is knowing when to repair, right, and knowing when to stay on the gun. Uh, could you elaborate on that? Uh, sure. So sometimes, oftentimes, I find myself with various gunners. We dash in, we go for a target, we kill that target we take fire, we have to break off. At that point, the gunner staying on the gun, while they may do some damage, they may even get a kill, leaves us exposed. Because even though backseat repairs only happen at 30% of regular speed, it is enough to get you over so many of the thresholds for being killed. Like, say a decimator will do, I think it's 49.9% of a harasser's health if you do not have composite. So, Every little tick of repair matters when it comes to getting out of a sticky situation. And if worst comes to it, he might suck a shell with his face, which will keep the car up and you just pop a beacon down. Yeah, like what, what, what kind of things you should have as a, as a gunner, we'll talk about that later with loadouts. But I've, 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 I think that I can say that I've noticed that every time we get hit by like, like a titan, right? Whenever our like HP goes to 50, I automatically start repping. It's, it's like, like that, that threshold that I, 
I physically have. Like, if I see 50%, I just jump out and rep. Would you yeah, say that's that's good or bad? In your that, opinion? It's that's so situation dependent though, because if if the situation if the survival is dependent on you killing the enemy, if you're in a situation where you cannot get away, you repairing isn't gonna make a difference, but you putting in damage might. That's true, but you, you know it's not something we can teach people. Like, they have to get no, it from no, experience. No, right? no, no. It, but it's... I guess a good point is favor survivor survivability all all over kills, right? But when I say survivability, I mean if you have to get the kill to survive, that's still it, right? But uh, but favors survivability over kills. That's I mean that's my philosophy, but I I know many drivers who'll just go for the kill regardless because the harasser is cheap, so who cares? I mean, well, yeah, but that's not a way to actually enhance and uh, the job of the, these videos and you know my channel always was to help people and that's what we're trying but, to do, right? But that's not entirely true. I mean, you play in, you you said it yourself. You played entry fragger. Your job is to go in, kill someone, die, hopefully get revived. That's the same with the harasser though, because you go in, you kill something much higher value. It's not doesn't matter so much on life. Well, but... of course, it's a good it's a good uh, platform to get you into a sun that you need to take down and then mine it or something. But you know, it can be done not specifically with a harasser. I mean, you could do it with a flash and shit. But sure, sure. But but I've got a great example though because um, I've done a lot of harassing in uh, service mesh settings and lane smash for that matter with varying success. Um, and there, the harasser, because of how cheap it is will allow you to do the job repeatedly and consistently while you're depleting the enemy's resources for basically nothing. All right. Which, it doesn't matter so much in live, but it's a good detail to have in mind. Okay, so I think that's actually a good s sum up to, you know, the basic of harassing. So, just to sum things up, like in driving, knowing your trains, most important thing, controlling your speed and staying calm, communicating with the gunner, having gunner experience, being creative and not getting into tunnel vision. And when it comes to being gunner, you have to communicate with your driver, know your weapon, practice tracking, and discipline, knowing when to fire and when not to fire, because that's important too. Knowing when to repair, or to when to stay on the gun, and actually driving a little bit so you get experience. And always, 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 communication is most important. So thanks a lot, GT. Uh, we'll come back to you guys with some more informational harassing, but more specific, t uh, specific subjects. But I want to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you both on stream and in-game. Renzer out. Say bye, GT. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.